Hello, in uh, this video I'm going to be talking about loss functions. And when we're trying to do a fit line, we really have two problems. One is how can we convert an intractable problem, being that there's no straight line that fits through all the points into something that's solvable, uh, into a different problem. And how can we make sure that uh, that different problem that we're solving is similar to our original problem, um, or at least measure um, how, how much different it is. And, uh, and so what I've done here is I'm generating some random data as I've done before. It's actually the same pattern as last time. Uh, B is some function of the A column. And then what I'm doing down here is I'm actually coming up with several different uh, E's that are similar or maybe not similar to B, right? So before we just had B not solvable and P solvable. Here I have three different P's all of which are solvable. And so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do my plotting. And uh, currently I'm just plotting my B's on the Y axis and my A's on the X axis. And uh, let me see what happens as I plot some of all these other uh, P values. Don't worry too much uh, for now where these came from. We're just focused on evaluating how good they are. I'm going to do that. And I see that that does somewhat approximate the data, right? I mean, it's the same average uh, value on the y-axis, right? But it's not a great fit. Uh, this second one, right? So I was trying to, you could think of it as just approximating the intercept. Uh, this second one is a slightly better fit, right? So I have some more uh, red lines with the stars. And, uh, and that's kind of approximating both the intercept and the slope. And then this third one is just really looking at the slope forcing the intercept to be zero. So you can already see that that um, is a pretty bad uh, way to map the data. But all three of these patterns that I'm doing are solvable, right? I mean, I could do a slope and an intercept for those. So how can I measure how good they are? And, and so here I'm going to just show you the data frame, right? My original data was B, and I was trying to figure out the relationship with B and A. Uh, that's not solvable. So I want to figure out the relationship between A and in one of these three columns, right? I want to figure out which column uh, is which I most accurately represents B. And so what we're going to do to uh, evaluate that is we're going to have a loss function. And a loss function is going to, in general, take two columns and uh, really tell us how much we're losing if we swap out one column for another, right? So maybe a loss function might tell me um, how much information am I losing if I swap out P0 for or B. And one loss function that we can use is, is called Euclidean distance. And, uh, and, and you've probably seen this before. It's actually the distance you're most familiar with. And so let's just try and work um, kind of with examples we're familiar with for a moment, uh, maybe from uh, high school geometry. And then we're going to come back to how this ties into what we're doing now with loss functions. So uh, don't, don't worry too much about this, but look at this table down here. Uh, what I have is two points, right? Each point is in a different, um, a different uh, column. And, uh, and in my rows, I have X and Y coordinates, right? So I have two points. And, uh, and so you can see there's, I could talk about, well, what is the distance between two, two columns? And here that has a very clear geometric meaning. Well, the distance between the two columns is really just the regular Euclidean distance uh, between those two points, right? So I could do that. Uh, maybe you remember the formula. Uh, we take the difference in the x values and square it. And then we take the difference in the y values and square that too. Add those together and then take the square root of the whole thing, right? The x squared plus the y squared square root of all that. That's the distance, right? That's the Euclidean uh, distance. Not the only way can people compute distance, uh, but definitely the best known. <clears throat> and it's absolutely true that um, if I was working in three dimensions, for example, maybe I'll put in here, the numbers aren't going to work out nicely for this one uh, unless I make them, but I'm not trying to. Um, then I could add a, you know, put a label on that. Right now I have these points. I could, um, well, this isn't going to work anymore, right? I guess I could if I wanted to um, add something like this. Let me, let me do this. I could um, put inside of that square root the difference in the z values as well. And, uh, and if these were, were two points in 3D space, this, uh, the distance between them would be eight, right? 
Now, uh, let me try to simplify uh, this equation a little bit. Uh, what am I doing? I guess I have uh, points of here, here's PT1. And, and the first thing I'm doing is I want to compute the distance between um, all the, the, the two x's. I want to compute the uh, kind of difference between the two y's, so on and so forth, right? So these three numbers are these three parts, right? This part, the x difference, the y distance difference, and the z difference. And um, if I wanted to, I could uh, square them, right? This will, this will square them each individually, right? So this is an element-wise operation. And, uh, and so now I have, I have this piece and this piece and the next piece. And uh, now I could, if I wanted to add them all together like this, right? So I could, uh, if I have a series, very easy to add. I just do a sum, boom, there I go. And then, then square root at the end, right? I can just uh, take the square root like so. And, uh, and you can see this is another way to compute that distance. Okay? Now, it's pretty intuitive, I hope, um, what this distance is doing in two-dimensional space and three-dimensional space. It turns out that the Euclidean distance can be um, computed for four-dimensional space. Uh, 100 dimensional space, any any space you want. It's defined. It's not really clear, you know, mentally what that means geometrically, uh, but but it's still something that we can measure. And uh, and so where does that come into play? Well, here it was very nice that uh, my three dimensions were x, y, z. And uh, when I'm dealing with something like this, though, right? I guess I had uh, before when I looked at my data frame that I had before. I have these. Um, these 30 columns, right? So if I have 30 columns, I'm in a 30 dimensional space. And I can think of each of these columns as a point in that 30 dimensional space. And I can compute the Euclidean difference, distance between these columns, right? I can compute the Euclidean distance between uh, B and, uh, and P0. And, and so let me, let me do that. Uh, I'm gonna say here, I wanna see what is the difference between uh, well, what are my column names in that first one? I think it was B and P0, right? And I can get a measure. The distance between those 30-dimensional points, right? Each point is a, is a column, is 68, right? So I'm going to do that. Um, let me look at the other one. Uh, I guess P1 and B are a little closer to each other than these. And, uh, and let, me, let me do the last one. Well, that one's really horrible, right? So, so you can see that based on this, um, well, what does this mean? This means that if I'm using Euclidean distance for my loss function, P1 is the best, right? And P2 is the worst. So middle one is the best, last one is the worst. And actually, if I head back up here and visually look at this, what was, um, what was, uh, what was P1, right? That was the best one. And... And, and that was the worst one, right? So you can see these measurements have pretty, um, pretty intuitive meaning. And, and so what happens when I'm doing a linear regression, uh, either of the two ways I've shown you before? Well, it turns out that it's finding the p-values that minimize the Euclidean distance between the columns and fitting to that, right? So this one is exactly um, what it would find. And it turns out that there's no set of straight points with um with a smaller loss than this so while we're at this that's one loss function let me talk about one more loss function that is in many ways equivalent right so when i have this right uh let, let me ask this so what makes this value small right so let me do that and, and it turns out let me just run that it turns out that um when the square root of something, well, okay, so let me back up here a little bit. What we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize this thing, right? And it turns out that minimizing this is the same as minimizing the square of it, okay? And, uh, and so if I minimize this, different number, right? But minimizing this would have been the same as, as minimizing this other value. And uh, the other thing, right, is minimizing a sum is actually equivalent to uh, minimizing an average, right? And, and so there I see I have uh, 
uh, 30, right, was my average squared uh, difference. Just it's very coincidental that these are are, are similar, right? I think that won't generally uh, be true, right? But what's interesting here is this is the Euclidean distance, right? E distance. And minimizing that is the same as minimizing this one. And there's a name for this metric, which is MSE, really directly derives what it's doing. This is the M is the average mean squared. There's a squaring error, right? This is the error, the difference between these. So the mean squared error, error. So that's another very common loss function that you should know. And minimizing the Euclidean distance is the same as minimizing the mean squared error. And so what people will often say they're doing is I'm doing a least squares regression. Why is it least squares? Well, we're min trying to minimize the mean squared error, which is the equivalent is minimizing this. Right? So when we're making that as small as possible, we're doing the least squared errors. And that's why we call this kind of fitting, where we pick the the best one in terms of this loss function, the least squared regression.